Okay, well, here we are. We're going to do what I'm calling Immunology 2, the second lesson in our Immunology series. Okay, well, I've subtitled this Antibodies and Antigens. We're going to find out that antibodies are made by what's called B cells that have changed into plasma cells. Maybe I can just say that right now and maybe not have to worry about that later. They're typically depicted as Y-shaped molecules, like one Y. If you drew a Y, let me get my pen going and go like this. A lot of times they're depicted just like that. And I'll show you some fi more fancy figures than that. Of course, you know, I'm drawing impaired, so that was hard for me to do. I want to bring out this illustration just as an introduction. Uh, there are a lot of great images. And, of course, all the images I show you, you should maybe pause, read it, see if you can digest it. But I'll just name a few things here. Uh, here's an antibody. Notice the Y shape. It's the two ends that are called binding sites. We're going to talk about that. They're antigen binding sites. And then on a specific antigen, an antigen we're going to talk a little bit about later. Oops, let me see if I can go back and do that again. Yeah. Um, an antigen is something foreign. So antibodies are looking out for something foreign, if they've been made against it, that's you know a deep well there. Not a, antibodies don't look for everybody; they just look at what they were made against. Anyway, that's a nice little introduction. So now I just want to show you what artists, how artists depict antibodies. I guess they're probably under the direction of somebody like me. I tell an artist to do something with graphic. Okay. Here's your typical Y, but it's not as quite as clean as just drawing a Y. And we have these variable portions, a light chain, that's this part. Heavy chains are here. And I will encircle or point out at least what's called the antigen binding site. Whatever this binds to, let's say a rabies virus, this one is identical in its function. So it's going to bind to a rabies virus, but the same, what's called epitope. Okay, let me just get that one out of the way a little bit. I'm just showing you some artist depictions. Okay, here's another one. They've still got that heavy chain, light chain designation. But now they're showing, <coughs> excuse me, two antigens. Here's one, here's another one. And an epitope is the site that the antigen, or that the antibody, sorry, binds to. Okay, the whole thing could be called an antigen, but then wherever this antibody binds to in a very specific manner, it was made against that spot, and that's an epitope. So it looks like the way they've got this drawn, it's like a mirror image, and that's going to hit there. Antibodies don't have to have both antigen binding sites filled. They just happen to have two, at least that type of antibody does. Here's another one. I always need to show you more than one. And this is showing antigens in green. This light green color, that's an antigen specifically binding to the antibody. And they made this a little Y shape. Of course, you can read text and pause and whatever. I'm moving on. Now I'm going to show you a table that's, I would say, worth its weight in gold. Um, there's a lot of these tables out there. This one kind of jives with exactly what I'm thinking. So I'm going to bring it down, and it's talking about the five classes of antibody. And I really, I guess I can't enlarge it any more than that. And then, of course, you can pause it after I'm done and digest it. So the five classes of antibodies, how do you remember them? Um, they don't have them quite the order that I would have them. But if you remember the word gamed, G-A-M-E-D, gamed, 
Each letter stands for a class of antibody, G-A-M-E-D. You can see they put the M out front there, but that's okay. Anyway, now we've got something that looks like Y's. We've seen that twice or before. They're, they've got three classes here that are showing the typical Y. But you should know that sometimes two Y's get together on their long ends, and they're called a dimer. If there's one, there's a monomer. Two is a dimer. And IgA tends to be a dimer. And then IgM tends to be a pentamer. Okay, so let me tick off the call the rows I think are important. Well, of course, the function. There you go. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I guess this is too. Okay, so now I'm not worrying about the names of the heavy chains. Look at here, number of antigen binding sites. Well, if there's five molecules, and each molecule of antibody has two binding sites, five times two is ten in most cases, right? They're heavy molecules. They're made of amino acids. I like this percentage in the, of antibody in the serum. Now, this is probably referring to humans, but it's pretty close, too. And you should know G is always the biggest one. But look at my G-A-M-E-D. G A M. So G A M accounts for most of the antibodies, right? IgG is the most prevalent. Then A and then M. So if you remember that, gamed. And then E and D, very little. Cross the placenta. That's incredibly important. Uh, now this is referring to humans, okay? So in humans, yes. IgG does cross to get to the fetus and give the fetus some antibodies before it's born. This also happens in dogs and cats. So yes, there's some. Every animal is different, every species. It does not occur in the horse. So if we were looking at a horse table, this yes would say no. Fixes complement, we'll talk about that later when we do complement, but you can say, hey, I remember the table. And then this FC portion, that's the long stem. This is called the FC portion. I'm not going to tell you why it's named that way. But what happens is antibodies can attach that way. So let me show you a cell. This could be what's called a B cell. We'll talk about that later. And lo and behold, a B cell has antibodies on its membrane like this. So these Y shapes now, you might say, what? Well, they're going to bind antigen, and they're, therefore these Ys on here are called the B cell receptor. They're going to bind antigen and then internalize, and with the help of other cells, this B cell is going to make antibody. So maybe I should just type in here B cell. Sometimes people put hyphens in there, sometimes not. So that's a B cell. So the Y-shaped structures on this B cell are the B cell receptor. And look at this column right here, B cell receptor. So that's interesting. Maybe I'll make an arrow here. Look at, there it is. I drew two B cell receptors. Do you know, in one of the books I was just recently reading, it said, now look at, I've got two antibody molecules on that cell. They say, the book said there's usually 100,000. So I'd have to draw 100,000 little Ys on that cell to be realistic. Obviously, don't have room. So the function down here, very important. We'll be talking about that later. But you should know that they're always going to be binding antigen. Secretory IgA is secreted into uh, mucus. Uh, products, tears, saliva, and what's neat, here's colostrum. So remember I said the horse, no antibodies cross the placenta, but horses, the foal needs antibodies right away. So the foal in all large domestic animals, like sheep and pigs and goats, they get antibodies in their colostrum only, not the placenta. 
a great table to read and digest. Well, okay, I just want to make a few words or say a few things about antigens, okay? Now, if you remember, the antibodies, like usual, are depicted as Ys. So let's say it's IgG. You know it wouldn't be IgM because there'd have to be five molecules of antibody tied together. IgM is a pentamer, usually. But here's antibody interacting with green antigen. And you've got quite a bit of interaction here. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about some properties of antigens because you should realize that a molecule can be a good antigen or a very poor one. It's like a gamut. You just, um, it can be quite different. Okay, let's put it that way. <clears throat> so here's a nice little table about the general properties of antigens. And antigens are foreign, but some molecules may not look very foreign, or some other ones look a little more foreign, and then some are incredibly foreign. And the more foreign you look, if you're an antigen, the better the immune response. And the less foreign, the less of the immune response. And what's kind of neat, let's say uh, in uh, donor recipient for tissues, let's say a skin graft from one individual to another. They try to find people that have the best match. And that means it looks closest to the person that's going to receive the tissue. Okay, so it can vary a lot, but it, it's amazing. Okay, then molecular size. Small molecules, you might call them incomplete antigens. They really can't elicit an immune response. They're foreign, but they're so small that the immune system can't really interact with them. And there's a key word here, haptin. A molecule that's an antigen, but almost too small to make any immune response is called a haptin. And there's a plural there, haptins. And what's kind of neat is if you have a molecule that you want antibodies made against, but you know it's a haptin, and for example, I'll give you like testosterone is a relatively small molecule. And if you inject testosterone into almost any animal, you probably wouldn't get any antibody response. But if you tie the testosterone to a big molecule of protein, let's say some albumin, then you get a great immune response, and some of the antibodies generated will be against testosterone. Okay, then the third parameter here, chemical composition. Well, almost anything can be a uh, antigen, but some of the cells are interact with proteins better. So only down here in the bottom line, only protein antigens are recognized by T cells and thus induce T cell help. So you should know that almost anything can be an antigen, even the lipid, carbohydrate, nucleic acids, whatever proteins. But then the T cells really like to interact with protein antigens. And I'm ending with uh, some of those fine illustrations that I used. Thanks a lot.